Hey everybody, Drew Gasparini here with the latest edition of Drew Gasparini's New Voices and I, as always, am very excited uh, for our guest today. His name is Richard Baskin Jr. And I saw him play live a few years ago at the West End Lounge here in Manhattan, and I was just blown away by him. And I'm so happy that he is our featured guest here for Drew Gasparini's New Voices. Thanks to everybody at the Ferguson Center for the Arts down in Newport News, Virginia. Bruce, Lori, Christy, and Paul, thank you. Couldn't do it without you. Let's get started, shall we? A little fun for you guys at home. Thanks for tuning in. This song is called Hugh Grant, inspired by the actor himself, and how, like, a stuttering, clumsy, cute man like that falls in love. Oosh, I could only wish. It goes a little something like this. Minute to minute, procrastinate a feeling never felt more in it. Now I'm tied up like a ball of TNT. If I miss it, that there's something here to risk You know it's a risky business Sitting like a stuttering fool I never felt like this And now I can't explain Why I had to wait But I can't stop from saying it now Oh, oh the words are on the tip of my tongue under my nose and in a minute the credits will be rolling so you better switch the mood before it's too late we talk through the night i look in your eyes till the moment is right and finally surprise it's gone i've waited too long now i can't explain why Da 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 da
you everybody for tuning in to this month's edition of Drew Gasparini's New Voices with our very special featured artist Richard Baskin Jr. And thanks to everybody who's been tuning in for the last several months. Bruce Bronstein down at Newport News, Virginia at the Ferguson Center for the Arts. He and I have collaborated on making this a series, a virtual series, while venues and theaters were closed during the quarantine and the pandemic and everything else uh, that troubled our world for such a long time. And even though we're still partly troubled, we're starting to see venues open back up uh, and we should celebrate that but while venues are figuring out how to open back up we're going to continue this series and it's just announced today that we're going to do this for four more all the way up through March so make sure to keep tuning in the last Thursday of every single month we're going to skip December and you're going to have a new featured artist a brand new songwriter for you guys to feast your ears on and I'm so excited that I get to bring them to you through this platform so thanks so much uh, this next song I'm going to do for you guys is a song I wrote during quarantine and it's called Learn to Let You Go and I think it resembles just a part of not necessarily a person you're thinking of letting them go but an emotion you're hanging on to that you wish you could outgrow so here it is Learn to Let You Go thanks for tuning in this is Drew Gasparini's New Voices Any pain, no, if only I could 
Passing it over to the very talented um, new voice today. His name is Richard Baskin Jr. I can't emphasize it enough. Everything I've heard of his, I'm like, why can't I have a grasp of talent like that? You know, when I hear other artists that inspire me or influence me, my brain automatically goes to, God, I wish I, my brain worked in that way. And uh, his is certainly one of those artistic, thoughtful brains, and I'm excited uh, to share him with you guys tonight, Mr. Mr. Richard Baskin Jr. So stick around. This is my last song. Um, I wrote it right in the middle of quarantine, and it is called On My Way. And I guess what we're saying with this song is it might not be a moment of strength. You might not feel that you're all right in the situation, but the only thing you can guarantee is that you're working toward it and you're on your way to feeling it. So this song is called on my way. One more time, this is Drew Gasparini's New Voices. Special shout out to Bruce, Lori, Christy, and Paul over at Ferguson Center for the Arts in Newport News, Virginia. I love doing this series. It is a mission statement of mine to give a platform to new artists. So thank you all for tuning in. Stick around for Richard Baskin Jr. right after this. I'm Drew Gasparini. Enjoy the rest of the show. Says it's day 64 And if we survive Then it's day 65 We're another day closer To come back to life I keep saying Trust time Time is all we have to work it out When it feels like nothing at all I should be I 
You guys, thanks so much. I'm Drew Gasparini. Coming up right now is Richard Baskin Jr. This is Drew Gasparini's new voices. Stick around. Hello, my name is Richard Baskin Jr. and I'm super excited to be joining um, Drew with this concert series new voices um i'm very honored that he chose me to be a part of this because i am a singer songwriter as well um as actor and teacher and all that stuff blah 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 but it's been a very long time since i've been able to just sit and do this communal thing with myself and my spirit and my art and my um, thoughts so thank you, Drew, for having me on today. Um, this song is called Crown, and Crown is about a person who has a lot of pressure put upon him from a young child to his adult life. Pressure to be, pressure to give, pressure to um, uh, help, do all of the things and there comes a time where you get burnt out and so this song is kind of written um, with that in mind specifically this person wishes that he had a twin someone who could just step in and help shoulder the burden um, that he had similar shared experiences with and that he can have fun with. So, um, I'm not a twin, but I do resonate with a lot of the things that this person, this character is um, talking about. Okay, so this is Crown. <laughs> Step I take, he would be there. He's so clutch. So many opportunities missed. Cause that boy, he doesn't exist. And now I'm alone here, facing the fact somehow I've let you down. Some folks say don't give up. I'm just trying to find what's wrong with me. Some days 
start the rain And some days not so much Every step I take He's not be there to be my clutch So many opportunities missed It's that boy he doesn't exist Now I'm alone here Raising the back Somehow I let you down Some folks say Trying to find what's wrong with me. Whoa, I can turn this thing around. Even though I've been knocked down, put my feet back on the ground. I can get back in the ring, even though these punches stay. Starting to feel that a little, a little too much, um, but anyway, this song kind of came out of um, a maddening, depressive episode where um, I moved to New York for some auditions that I was like in final callbacks for. I didn't get the part. A friend of mine actually got the part, which is fine. We love that. We are here for that. Um, but, you know, it didn't work out the way that I wanted it to work out. And, you know, you got to get to work. You've got to, uh, you know, make sure you can stay here. So I would end up at a few jobs and it just was not going well. I mean, I was great at my job, but outside circumstances um, in the workplace and in my personal life, uh, family life was just preventing me from being happy and um, if I'm not happy for it, a period of time it starts to take a toll on just how I do things and um, my mood and my creativity is is stumped um, all of that to say I was in a major depression uh, I ended up not being get, not being able to get out of bed and it wasn't pleasant. I wasn't nice. I wasn't productive. I just felt nothing. And this song kind of brought me out a little bit so that I could write more and see that there was more and I could be creative in that moment. Um, this next song is called Jump. <laughs> and I wrote it because I was in a relationship. I was in a relationship uh, about maybe six years ago. And I was, it was the first relationship that I had just given <clears throat> everything. And I mean, I was in it, in it to win it. You know, uh, plans were being made. And this is right before I moved to New York. Um, but I just loved that person in spite of all the red flags um, and this is what came of it It's 
walk outside and the sun is burning bright over my head we catch a ride on the way down to the shore instead of staying in bed something can't commit to what we have here and reminiscing only intensifies your fears jump in the water with me Jump in the water with me. Be together for eternity. You've got your pain. Well, well, I've got my pain too. It's the same song and dance. It seems insane. But this is tried and true. Just give it a chance. Something is missing. You won't commit to what we have here. And reminiscing only intensifies your fear. All these songs are bringing back memories. Yeah, that was a rock, a wild time. Like, yeah. I'm all in. You're all in. But kind of not. Um, fun time, honestly. Uh, learned so much about myself and what I do for love and what I don't do for love anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving right along. Um, this next song is called Won't Let You Fall. And this is, you know, if, if Crown was like in, in a step in the right direction, this is me starting to like really feel really feel um, convicted and and pressed to do and be more than you know but it, it was it was of my own um, 
it was coming from me and it wasn't being put on me by somebody else. Uh, this song, Won't Let You Fall, it's kind of like a promise. It's a promise to me that whatever happened, whatever happened, it's me. It's you, me. And when I say you, I'm talking to myself in the mirror. <laughs> it's you and me. Um, which is, there's something freeing about that in a really weird way. This is, I think, the first song that I, like, actively cursed. And so my mom heard this song, and she, <laughs> she's like, do you have do you have to swear? Like, do you have to? And I'm like, yes, mom, I do. Um, but yeah, I'm finding that I like, I really do still love these songs because they not necessarily remind me of a time, but they are like a part of me. And I still see the um, feelings that I had and I still uh, feel the drive that I had when I wrote these. So this is Won't Let You Fall. <laughs> Obligatory swig of coffee. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm feeling the, you know, the, um, the stripped down versions of these songs, which is, uh, it's, it's crazy because I have always been a person to not put my own work out. Um, there was a moment where I was just happy to be an interpreter of other people's music, but there's something about your own thoughts in motion, your own patterns and love and emotions in motion through music. So I'm very happy and uh, just happy to commune with myself, in, you know, in this moment. I never really get a chance to do that anymore. So anyway, uh, that's Won't Let You Fall. And I hope that you won't let yourself fall. Okay. Boom. I have one more. And it's called My Voice. The interesting thing, um, the interesting thing about writing your own things is that you have to find your own voice and trust that it is your voice. I mean, we have so many different influences, um, you know, that make us who we are. And the one thing that has stuck out to me the most was the one thing that stuck out to me the most was you are all of those things um, and in your voice you can be all of those things I mean that probably sounds too too big of a concept but your voice is your voice so here is to embracing said voice
at full speed. This is my boy. I don't have to be afraid of it. my choice, for which I'll never be apologetic. Starting right now. Huh? Boom. My voice. Um, I'm just really happy that we're doing this today. Like, piano, voice, camera. I never do this. I never do a camera situation. Um, I said that was my last song, but I think that I'm going to do one more. Uh, this song is called, it's, it's in the, it's, it's new, um, still been written, but I am a, uh, first generation, um, descendant of the South. So my grandmother is from the South. Oh, and, my, and so is my father. So yes, that was correct. I am a first generation, <laughs> like, removed from the South. Um, but I was very much raised with, in the North, with Southern, like, things that I didn't innately recognize as Southern because we lived in Michigan. Um, so yeah, the, the biggest thing was time. The biggest thing was time. It was like, why are you running to a red light? You know, that's a huge thing. And of course, in the business that we're in, you know, in the city that we're in, it's all go, 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 go. Um, but there is peace in being quiet. Uh, and that is a lesson that I have to keep learning more and more every day. Um, not everything has to be go, 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 go. Uh, because if it is, then everything will be gone. Everything will be gone and you will have no, you have not experienced what you have need, what you needed to experience. Um, so this song is called "Take Your Time," and it's only been heard once, and it's more of a meditation. It's more of a meditation rather than a full fledged song, as we've done before, like earlier in this. Um, but yeah, it's the, my roots of time, space, 
gospel-esque, you know, groundedness. Um, my great uncle had a garden. He passed away, obviously. Um, but he had a garden and he grew the fattest tomatoes and the best greens that I knew. And on Saturdays, we will go over. He lived maybe like uh, eight blocks away from us. So we would go over, go through the garage, um, go to his backyard, look at the greens, look at the tomatoes that had just been picked. And we would come in and have the greens that he already, you know, made. So my favorite, one of my favorite dishes is greens and cornbread. And you just put the cornbread into the greens and just, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my favorite things. But this song reminds me of that time of my life where I was not go, 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 go all the time. So yeah, this is called Take Your Time. Look me in the eye. 
forget how therapeutic and healing music can be even though that's what I surround myself all the time with but I hope that the things that I have written about resonate with you and Drew thank you again for having me on the show today all right I'll see you soon. Bye. Hey, now. Boom. How do we feel, Richard? How do you feel, man? Man, it's <laughs> it's interesting. I feel great. Yeah. Uh, so people heard those. <laughs> people heard those songs. And I just, you know, we got a, a few minutes here to chat. And I'm excited to talk to you about this. and. I clocked it and I'm very happy for myself selfishly right now that I just knew how special you were based on the small amount I heard. And then watching this set tonight, I think I had a religious experience. <laughs> so good. Yes. But but it's it's beyond let, let let me just get into this for a minute. It's beyond your songwriting, which is so superb and your vocals are like I, I don't even want to talk to you about it because it'll actually make me angry but uh and you're and you're playing and your musicianship and everything it is so stellar but everything you say about the songs leading into these songs uh, they they it's like you give us this giant heart to hang on to while we watch you spill the rest of yourself out in the song and I was just holding your heart, looking at it, and seeing my own heart next to your heart. It all it all makes sense, everything you're saying. I wrote something down, because I feel this all the time in this industry. Um, that last song you just sang, Take Your Time. Boy, we should ever, everybody in the world should get that tattooed on their forehead. I, I really think that, especially if you're in show business, we're in a world of hurry up and wait. And you mm -hmm. said something about running to the red light. And I feel like that all the time. And you, let me tell you that during this pandemic, we've all been given some time to kind of sit. And that is one of the biggest things I've reflected on is this is not a race. And the, mo the more you give right away, before you even know what the goal is, the more you're putting out there, before you even see what it is you're running toward, the more shattered you're going to be. 
the less of yourself you're going to be at the end of this. And you, my friend, are graceful and beautifully spoken and eloquent. And it's in how you speak about your material. It's how you speak in general. And it just, it totally translates into your music. And I really, really enjoyed your set. I can't thank you enough for sharing such vulnerable material. And in the vulnerability, boy, do we, we you know, you talk about take your time, you take about, uh, not, so I, I can't seem to shut up, which is something you're very good at doing. And I need to take a, a note out of your book about that. But you talk about all these things and I'm telling you, man, that vulnerability where it's scary to kind of share those things it's so universal. Everything that you shared tonight clicked with everybody in some capacity. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for, you. for doing this. Oh man, <laughs> I I cannot wait to do more things with you. That is true. Can we just real big congratulations? I hope it's heard around the globe. Uh, making your Broadway debut. Am I correct in saying that? That you yeah. were making a Broadway debut in Freestyle Love Supreme? I used to see Freestyle Love Supreme back in the day at Joe's Pub back in like 2009 when I when I just started getting uh, going out here. How does it feel? It feels great. Um, it makes you think, I mean, well, you know, I'm a, a jazz major and blah, blah, blah. And so this couldn't have been like a more perfect thing for me to do is because mm. we're making things up on the spot um, every every time. And yeah. so that's great. And it also makes me think about uh, improvising in a different way. So yeah. I'm usually not a person that speaks a lot. Yeah. I, I know this about you. <laughs> <laughs> but I love words and word play and um, how people can feel just by the shade of a word or when it's used or how it's used. Yeah. Um, which is why, like, some, in my songs, there are some words that you, you wouldn't think that you would hear it, like, in a pop song. Like, I think I said vestiges once. Right. And... <laughs> <laughs> it's like who's what yeah. is what, what's that um, you must have read a book at one point Jesus <laughs> <laughs> oh man but I it's it got me like re um, uh, invigorated into writing because yeah. oh, good. I'm hearing this stuff every night and it's like not only do they get, I get to play off of them. I also am playing off of the audience. You know, we get information from them. I'm also playing off the other keyboardist and anything, everything that I've been uh, brought in from the day. So it's nuts. Huh? <laughs> That's the only way that I can really describe it. I think it's a really fun, what a fun way to get back in the reopening of theater though. I mean, like just kind of being right. on stage with, with people who are like top of their game, improvisers and rappers and singers and musicians. That is a fun thing to do, especially because like, I, I know there's rehearsal for you guys, but what really is the rehearsal process if the show is made up every night, you know? It's it's a rehearsal in the fact that we know we have goal posts, yeah, um, and how the show is going to flow. So we don't really necessarily well, we don't really rehearse uh, the material, but we do. Okay. It's like okay, so this is that moment, and this is how we get from that moment to another moment, um, which could be this or that or this. <laughs> uh, right. So, right. The, the rehearsal is less a rehearsal and more a walk through question mark i i wish every show was like that that's my that's how my brain works and i just i'm so what a fun time and you get to work with a bunch of nobodies like lin manuel and tommy kale and a bunch of hats nice. and brady i'm sure he makes an appearance but nobody's um, yeah. I noticed something. Speaking of speaking of Broadway and Lin Manuel and uh, your writing in particular, your songs, even though they're coming from a really personal point of view, you introduce them saying, "This character, this character would think, this character wishes they had the twin." You know, and, and it's all relatable, and it does feel like it's pouring out of your own diary. But in this character-driven work that you're creating, is any of it good? 
spin off and become another avenue for you for uh, yeah. writing a musical one day? I am, I have several ideas um, kind of floating around. And when I say floating, they're, re- they're not really floating. They're like in the early stages of like, okay, so who is this character? What what do they really want? Um, right. Yeah, so it's, it, and how can, some characters live in multiple worlds and it's really just deciding who do they actually come into play with and what does that interaction do right, to and right. with that character. Right. Oh, well, you know, I mean, I think everybody here who listened to your set tonight will know that like however long you need to take on figuring all that out, take all the time you need because the result is going to be an absolutely outstanding thing. And and I'm excited to see what comes of all that. Um, Thank you. Before, before we bounce, I just wanted to ask one real kind of nerdy question, but some of the songs, like, I, I don't know if you're like me, but when I listen to other songwriters, I, I immediately feel the, it's like, it's like how you see stand up comics talk to each other. They might not have the same style of comedy, but you get the, you get the life. They understand, they have yeah. an understanding of life, right? Mm-hmm. I, you and I, there were moments where I was like just listening to your voicings and listening to your left hand. And I'm like, oh, I got to do more of that. Like, I'm, I'm starting to hear how I I appreciate all your sounds and styles. And we were, we were talking, you know, kind of behind the scenes here. And I started asking, do you listen to this guy? And then I was like, let's talk about influences after this. So I really want to know who some of your influences are because You've got a jazz background. Uh, you're you you have a voice that sounds like it can do literally every genre under the sun, uh, and your songwriting style sounds like it could be straight out of the uh, Elton John handbook. I mean, like, so I, I just want to know what were you? What was the house sounding like when you were a kid growing up before songwriter or artist was a part of your um, title? Yeah, I would say that. For the most part, it's it's a gospel, like a gospel. If I could split it into a couple of different things, please, yeah. Um, church is. I mean, we were in church nonstop, and um, the church that I went to, the choir director was my piano teacher. Gotcha. So, um, and she kind of introduced me to a lot of chords uh that were like that had alterations and things like that that weren't just one three five um so it was just like oh this is a cool sound and i just started picking up some of the stuff that she was doing and then that kind of led me to a jazz thing in high school with my choir teacher there and he was a jazz rhythm and blues cat um from like the 60s and like on the opposite ends of that is my you know my piano lessons classical so there's a music theory i'm a music theory like geek um yeah. but in the middle of all of that it's like all the stuff that's playing at the house all of the earth wind and fire stuff all of the stevie wonder stuff all of the um yeah all of the motown just any and everything we were listening to. Shaka Khan. Um, oh, man. Cool in the Gang. Just pretty much any and everybody. Nat King Cole, Natalie Cole. Um, yeah. My mom actually kind of looks like Natalie Cole, which is was strange. But, and That's, actually. It all in the, it's all been the stars. And like, it's like, you know, and my <laughs> grandfather kind of looks like Nat King Cole a little bit. At any rate. The um, it was everything. It was, yeah. It it was everything. It sounds Nothing like everything. Really, even even a little rock, like when we would listen to Tina Turner, um, which is rock, you know. Uh, a Absolutely. Lot of the early, oh my god. The early church stuff is also rock. I just think it it makes perfect sense when you start listing your influences and it's basically a playlist of 
every artist ever. And <laughs> and that's how it translates, basically. That's why I wanted to know, because like some household is like, oh, my parents only listen to, you know, Led Zeppelin and the Grateful Dead. Black, that, you know, that's what I was raised on, those bands. But when mm -hmm. you start rattling off, oh, it starts at church, and then when we get home, is Earth, Wind, and Fire, Shaka Khan, all that kind of stuff. You sound like just m music in your DNA nonstop in every direction. It sounds like you've been influenced by everything. And it's it's truly amazing. That's that's why you can do jazz. And that's why you can hop to musical theater as well. And that's why you hear all those influences in your own songwriting. And I just think it's really, really fantastic. Richard, I again, I can't thank you enough for doing this and uh this you know if you're watching live right now god bless you if you're not um we're gonna make sure people see that this link is available uh forever and ever because this is a great set of songs and and uh it's so beautifully spoken i can't say it enough i really really enjoyed this set one of my favorites so far uh just in terms of what you were saying and the songs that you played um i really can't wait to hopefully collaborate with you one day but until that day my friend Best of luck with the rest of the run with Freestyle of Supreme. Congratulations on that. Uh, Thank best you. of luck with your upcoming jazz uh, project that you're putting together right now, which is really exciting to hear. And any musical theater writing that you end up doing, Godspeed, my friend. I, you're a beautiful man and you write beautiful music. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard Baskin Jr. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, ma'am. Thank you, everybody, at the Ferguson Center for the Arts. Bruce, uh, Christy, Lori, and Paul, you know I love you. Thank you so much again. And big shout out one more time for Richard Baskin Jr. That was so thrilling for me to watch. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed that as much as I did. We will see you guys next month. November 19th is when we'll be back uh, with Jake Boyd Young. So check that out. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.